Many of our foods are refined and processed and, and manufactured, they're franken foods. Mm. So we're taking in toxins actually in the food itself. Our foods get sprayed, our crops get sprayed with pesticide, with um, you know, various different types of fertilizer, many of which we know are dangerous. There's a big, you know, there's, there's a huge um, case at the moment mm. against Monsanto for their Roundup um, pesticide. So, you know, there's lots and lots of toxins around us. All right, welcome back to Peaks Life again. Thank you very much. All right, today I've got a challenging one for you, and one that's close to our heart because we spend a fair bit of time in Indonesia, which is high on the list for this one in particular. And it's all around detoxing and making sure that you're doing everything possible to detox where you live, what you do, but also importantly, how do you detox your body? For a, uh, for a peace life and for a perfectly functioning well body. Mm. Here's the challenge. Detox, tell us all about it. Well, let's, let's start with tox, not, tox, not detox. Tox, yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> we, if have, we, we haven't deed it yet, we've just got to tox it. That's it. So if, if, forget the detox bit. What, mm. what are we talking about here? We're talking about toxins. Mm. And um, yeah, I guess if you look at the, the average person today, they're exposed to hundreds, potentially thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of different toxins mm. in, in the course of their day, their week, their month, their, their entire life. So, you know, we're essentially bombarded continuously with toxins of, of all different types. And, you know, they can range from, the, the one that you were just referring to, Mike, was pollution. Mm. That's what got me interested because I was on, by, on the, uh, the way back from the gym this morning. And at the moment we're in Bali in Indonesia and uh, there's a lot of pollution, <laughs> a lot of pollution. And we do everything, we do everything really you know, sort of fastidiously to look after our bodies, look after our wellness. But sometimes you're in a situation, as we were this morning, going through traffic, um, where there is a huge amount of toxins surrounding us and it's the awareness that, what do we do? What, you know, how can we avoid that? Or is it just the awareness piece and how do we detox those toxins that we, can, we cannot avoid? Yes, yeah, so it makes sense. But mm. let's first of all look at where those toxins come from. Mm. So like you say, the, the pollution for many people, especially if you're in Asia, um, maybe South America, some parts of the world are really heavily polluted and that pollution can come from a range of sources. So China suffers a lot of pollution when it comes to industry. So industry, factories, chimneys, you know, refineries. You can see it sometimes when you drive past these industrial sites. Yes. You see great big plumes of, of black smoke and you really don't know what's in mm -hmm. them. And you know, there's chemicals. There's chemicals and people living close to chemical factories, refineries, industrial plants, power stations, you know, the old coal-fired power station, um, of which there are still many, many in the world, yeah. they're throwing out chemicals all the time. So, you know, basically the air that we breathe, um, the pollution in, in the air from cars and from exhaust fumes. So if you live somewhere like Ho Chi Minh City um, or Singapore um, or, you know, somewhere like Kuala Lumpur, or a lot of those Asian cities, Jakarta, where it's nose to tail traffic and it's cars and buses and trucks and scooters and bikes. And they're all, you know, they're not maintained mm. to the same standards that some yes, of the so Western the countries. The emission standards are a little bit more lax. That's it. So you've got all those emissions. Mm. So you've got pollution from the factories. You've got pollution from the car exhaust, and that's both chemicals and it can be particulates as well. So literally particles of soot and that sort of thing. Um, so you're taking in through the air that you breathe. Yes. Um, right now we know that there's fires burning in Kalimantan. And we're here in Indonesia and many, many Indonesians right now, you know, and our thoughts go out to them, they are suffering from respiratory infections and respiratory problems, especially young kids, because the, the fires are causing mass pollution. Mm. So, you know, we've got those sort of issues where there's a, a natural phenomenon like a fire, may have been started you know, by, by, uh, by man, but it's causing mass pollution of the air. So we're seeing the, you know, the air is polluted. Then we see that the environment around us gets polluted as well. So think about the oceans. So if you're an avid surfer, you know, you like going surfing, you get out into the sea, nothing better than blue sky, blue sea, freedom of the waves. <laughs> However, you may well be surfing in amongst sewage, plastic waste, um, trash, 
you know, there could be anything in the water. And we Absolutely. know that the waters around our countries yes. are sadly highly polluted. You go to many beaches and there'll be signs up saying, it's not safe to swim here, the water's not clean here. Or you go to a country like Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, there's no signs up because they're not monitoring the water quality, but the water quality is shit. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're in there with phthalates, you know, endocrine disruptors, all sorts of nasty. So again, you're absorbing it through your skin. Yes. Um, you're then eating. So we eat food that's processed that gets wrapped in plastic, cling wrap, glad wrap. We drink out of plastic bottles. And we put our food in plastic bags. And you know, we know we, there's been a big thing about BPA over the years, but there are many, many other toxic components in plastic. Yes. So we're eating it and drinking it. It's coming in with our food. Many of our foods are refined and processed and, and manufactured. They're franken foods. Mm. So we're taking in toxins actually in the food itself. Our foods get sprayed, our crops get sprayed with pesticide, with um, you know, various different types of fertiliser, many of which we know are dangerous. There's a big, you know, there's, there's a huge um, case at the moment mm. against Monsanto for their Roundup of course. Um, pesticide. So, you know, there's lots and lots of toxins around us on our foods and our fruits and our vegetables. Mm. Um, we're exposed to hormones. If you eat meat, which has not been organically grass-fed, then the chances are it's got hormones in it, it's been injected with antibiotics because it's, it's eating a diet that doesn't keep it well, so it has to be given antibiotics persistently. It's given gro growth hormones to fatten it up. All of that is coming through to you in the meat and the fat. So you're, again, you're consuming. So we're getting those foods into our body. In our own personal environment, in our homes, we know that people live with mould and fungus. So again, we're constantly exposed mm. to all of these toxins and they're building up and building up and building up in our body and making us sicker and sicker. And then we add on potions and lotions and chemicals and stuff as well. That's in exactly addition right. To all of it. So we've defined the toxic, the toxic environment we live in. So some of us live in parts of the world where unavoidably we're exposed to different levels of toxins mm. but almost all of us in some way are exposed to different types of toxins because of our environment our food and the, the activities that we undertake mm. so we've got the problem we are toxic we are toxic we are toxic and, and sorry let, let me just add one little thing in there that you know we've got all of these toxins and even mm. if you live clean mm. you can't avoid them no. in our modern society they are pretty much unavoidable you may be able to avoid some of them yes you know so you might not have the toxic load i might have a different toxic load to what you've got yes um, but we're also exposed to things like supplements you know medicine they're all foreign to our body mm. they're not mm. natural so we're taking them for a good purpose but again they may be building up and they may be causing problems and then we get exposed to bacteria and disease and you know all sorts of other you know biological organisms that also get you yep. know trapped in our body as well so if anybody's listening in anybody's tuning into this episode thinking they're not toxic they're wrong because in some way shape or form they would have taken in some toxins even those people who are tuning in who are very clean living still a small amount of toxins to the people who live in parts of the world or have a lifestyle that is surrounded by toxins so the next step then is once we realise that we have these toxins in our system mm. to look at the different ways to remove those toxins and I guess detox the body. That's exactly yep. right Mike, cool. yep exactly. So you know, I think when we talk about detoxification it's another one of those topics that, that conjures up a bit of a woo woo it sort does. of you know um, it's only for either celebrities because mm -hmm. they're always detoxing, Yes. it's for people with money that they can go off and have fancy spa treatments. Yes. Um, or it's you know for anybody who wants to try an alternative therapy, mm -hmm. and it conjures up images of you know um, you know all sorts of weird and wonderful it does, it types does. of treatment. Yes. So I think that you know people have an impression that when we say the word detox, mm -hmm. it's a bit sort of far fetched for most people. And also a lot of people think associate detox with someone who has um, deliberately toxified their body. So there might have been. On a food bender, or they might have been on an alcohol bender, or they might have been doing something, might have been partying for a month, mm. and then typically they say, "Well, I'm going on a detox yeah. because I've done this to my body willingly, and now I'm going to detox." Rather than 
looking at a, 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 um, a routine of regular detox, because knowing that there is toxins in the environment, and whether we're on a bender or not, we're going to get those toxins in. So looking at what are the different types of detox procedures, different areas of the body, and how do we go through and make sure that we are doing everything possible to remove the toxins that we can unavoidably take in. And I think that you're exactly right there. I often am. <laughs> we'll leave that just, up for judgment. Just to put that one in there. We'll leave that up for judgment. <laughs> um, but you know, you are, you're right. It's, it's something we should be doing every day. Yes. It's not a big one-off. Mm. I'm not an advocate of doing a big cleanse because I truly believe that those big cleanses actually, they either don't work, you're wasting your money, they can't pull everything out of the system. And sometimes when people go for a big detox, they're actually left feeling pretty shit afterwards. Because mm -hmm. if you pull those things, a really good example of this is mercury. Many of us got exposed to mercury way, way back. Yes. And we didn't know about it. So whether it was mercury um, fillings, you know, lots of us had mercury fillings as kids. Um, or I remember when I was in the lab you know, during my science classes, my chemistry classes, we were actually still able to touch mercury. Wow. Right? And that's banned now. You don't, you can't touch it. Was touch in the it. 30s or the 40s? Yeah, it was in the 20s. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you've got this issue that we were exposed to toxins way, way back, and some of them are really quite dangerous. But while they're sitting in the body, there's only a limited amount coming out on a daily basis. Now, if I go and grab them, so if I go and try and chill out that mercury and pull it out of my body, I'm going to get a big toxic shock from that because as it moves through all the detox systems in the body, it's, it's going to cause some pretty nasty side effects. Mm -hmm. So there are some pretty nasty ones where if, you're, if you've been exposed and you've got a high level of mercury and you might detect that through a hair analysis, you actually don't want to pull them out fast because you'll do more damage than it's worth. So my real belief on this is just do a bit of detoxing every single day and there are lots and lots of simple things that you can do. Got it. All right. So what are the different detox areas or steps? And give me a number. You love numbers? Oh, I love numbers. We've got, we've got basically five right. systems in our body. So you think about the major organs okay. and, and the body. We've got five of them yes. that are really responsible for detox. And we can easily incorporate some detox procedures or routines into our day. We can. Okay, good. So we've got the five systems. Let's just run through them. They are the liver. Yes. Um, it's the kidneys. It's the lungs. It's the skin. And it's the gut and bowels. Okay. So those are our five systems of right. detox. And people maybe only think about the bowels because that's where we eliminate the waste from mm, our body. Yes. But it's not the only system. Okay. All right. So where do you want to start? Let's, let's go from the top and maybe give us a bit of a description around that particular detox system. Mm. And, and then maybe some tips on some ways that people can, I guess, without going off and detoxing, maybe modify or change their routine or add some things in mm. to have some regular small detoxes for each one of those systems. And then if you did all five, your body's constantly detoxing. Sounds good. All right. First one. Um, I'm going to go to liver. Liver. Let's do the liver. So the liver is Stop a really... Stop drinking is one. Well, <laughs> maybe or maybe not, but let's, okay, let's right. not talk about alcohol right yep. now. The liver is one of the really important systems in the body okay. and it's got many, many functions. Now, you might know it as you, you just said, if you drink alcohol, then the body is the place where alcohol gets metabolized. Mm -hmm. and the liver is. The liver is, sorry, yeah. what did I say? You said the body. The body, there the you body go. Is. The body is, the <laughs> liver is. So the liver is the place where the alcohol gets metabolized. Yes. And basically in the liver, um, it's performing lots and lots of functions but it is quite susceptible to damage okay. anyway. So we're not really talking about damage to the liver, so we're not really going to talk about things like alcohol, um, but we are talking about when we put a toxic load or a load on the liver, it can get overwhelmed. Right. And then it can't perform its detox duty properly. Okay. So if it gets exposed to a lot of alcohol, for example, and we get fatty liver disease um, or cirrhosis of the liver, it can no longer do its detox functions. So that's why you know, alcohol can be bad for the liver in, in quite high quantities. Absolutely, or long-term use. Long-term use. Sugar, and we talk about sugar in one of our other episodes. The devil food. The devil food, yes. the addiction that is sugar. Sugar's also the same. So sugar and carbohydrates put a massive load on the liver, and it has to do a lot of work. And again, you can get fatty, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which mm. then stops the liver detoxifying the body. So the liver performs all these functions, like it makes ketones. Um, it is the place where hormones 
um, get transported around. Right. They get either taken in and recycled or passed out of the body, or they get sent out around the body. So the liver has all these really important functions and it has this detox function as well. Right. So it will take all of the chemicals that have ended up in the bloodstream, it allows that to be filtered out, all of that rubbish gets filtered through, it processes the used cholesterol that's mm. coming back to the, the liver with lots of, you know, where it's transported um, hormones around the body. So basically the liver has, you know, so many different functions, it's massively important to mm. us. That makes sense. So we have a very important organ that is clearly overloaded in a lot of cases. Mm. It has a detox function, but because of a lot of our lifestyles, and especially those people who do have excess alcohol or sugar, or maybe they don't uh, look after their liver the way they should, then it may not be doing that detoxification as well and as effectively as it should. So what are some tips then to ensure my liver can detox the toxins on an effective basis, on a regular basis? Yeah, so, you know, if you're somebody who gets exposed to, you know, various different toxins going into the body, as you said earlier, we all do, you really want your liver in tip-top condition. Yes. So the things that you can do, first one's really easy. First mm. one is eat well. Mm. Not easy, but it's the best one. Well, we think some, it's easy. We think it's easy, but some people struggle with the old eat well. They do. And the eat well wouldn't be sugar, would it? Uh, probably not <laughs> sugar as the, uh, as the first choice. Remove the devil food. <laughs> yeah, so, look, we're talking about a whole foods diet. Yes. Um, we're talking about making sure that you've got really good quality ingredients yes. so let me just break that down remember a few minutes ago i said if your animals that you eat if the meat you eat has got hormones in it if it's got antibiotics if it's got growth promotants then they're going into your body mm -hmm. and they're damaging your body so basically you want to be eating the best quality meat and because meat is important not we don't eat huge quantities mm -hmm. of keto food of meat on the keto so it's good to lifestyle buy the good stuff. but buy the good stuff yes. so Make eat the organic grass-fed meats. Organic means? Organic means it's been grown without the use of artificial chemicals. Okay. Um, so anything that's been put into the soil, onto the soil, onto the food yep. is basically natural. Okay. Um, and so you're not going to get the same. You will get some issues. Yes. You'll still get some additives and things, but not so the really, level of not, toxicity. Not a bit commercial. Yeah. yeah. And then grass-fed obviously means they eat the grass rather than pellets or chemicals or additives. And... Um, it means they eat grass, not grains. Yes, that's what I meant. So grass-fed grass is pretty, pretty obvious. So grass-fed, if you yeah. think about grass-fed, you think about what, what are cows designed to eat? Grass. Cows have four stomachs to break down grass. Mm. So grass should be out there eating you know, the grass, the nice mm. green. You think about a nice green pasture, mm. that's what cows should be eating. Yes. But a lot of um, places where they're over farming mm. and they're really, you know, got basically too many cattle on too small a piece of land, they don't have the, the green grass all year round. Mm. Um, it's also, it can be quite expensive to put grass out to, uh, to put cows out to pasture because mm. again they need that big area. So they'll supplement. They'll either supplement things like hay, which is obviously dried grass, or grains. Okay. So the cows are getting the shit that you don't want to eat. Why would you want to eat cows that have eaten grains? So again, their fat composition is different. They don't have all that beautiful, healthy fat on their body. Their fat is loaded with all sorts of, you know, nasties. Whereas if you go for the grass-fed animals, beautiful fat that's full of vitamin K, full of conjugated linoleic acid, CLA, and all those amazing things. All right, so we're talking the liver detox system. So eat, so eat well. Before we've gone off it, eat well. Yes. Try and go for organic. Yes. Um, vegetables especially, you know, they can be loaded with all sorts of pollutants. Anything that's got a coating yes. on it, be careful of that. Um, really try and go for the whole foods. Yep. Try and avoid the processed foods and make sure that you've got that really nice, nice balanced diet because then you're putting into your body the best quality ingredients and you're not taking in extra toxics mm. with your food. Okay. So that's eliminating the toxics as far as you can from your food. That's yes. the first thing. The second part of that, and it fits really well with the ketogenic... Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Who knew it fits perfectly with the keto diet? <laughs> it. it fits really well with the keto lifestyle is the fats. Yes. So on our keto lifestyle, we eat fats and our liver loves fat mm. so even though we people hear the term fatty liver disease mm. and they assume that when they eat fat the liver doesn't cope with it and it gets this fatty liver disease completely the opposite 
fatty liver disease comes from alcohol, that's the alcoholic variety, or from carbohydrates and sugar, that's the non-alcoholic variety. So fats don't cause liver disease, in fact they can reverse it. Mm. So on a good healthy diet where you're eating lots of beautiful whole food and you're eating beautiful fats, those healthy fats, the avocados, the olive oils, the animal fats like mm. the butter and the ghee, you're having you know the um, the, the actual the uh, the fresh foods, having the beautiful cheeses, mm, and nuts and cheeses. You're and having all that <coughs> wonderful, yeah. wonderful Absolutely. fat. Mm. That is great for the body, great for the liver. It allows it to go mm. through its mm. detox process. So again, the other thing is, lots of people detox by having a juice fast. They start drinking vegetable juices like they've gone out of fashion. <laughs> lots of green juices and forgetting that what they're doing is they're actually taking in pure sugar that's not going to detox the liver that's yes. going to contribute to any fatty yep. liver disease yep. so i'm not an advocate of those sort of fasts if you're going to fast do a water fast or a fat fast because fat is going to support your body it's also going to allow all of that beautiful cholesterol to be transported around your system mm. which will allow the hormones to be transported which come out of the liver and it will allow the hormones to be transported back when they've been used to recycle back to the liver. So fats are just an amazing basis for liver health. Good, so whole foods, healthy foods, increase the fats or make sure you have the right level of good healthy fats. That's right. And your magic herb. And then I've got one addition for you and lots of people will hear things like, you know, supplement and take milk thistle and they're definitely useful. Yes. Right, so they've got a place. But one that you can incorporate into your diet without taking a supplement is turmeric. Turmeric. Turmeric or turmeric, however you, you have to And I use that lots in my cooking, don't I? You do. You do. You do. <laughs> I do because you insist that I put turmeric in everything. Beth, I love turmeric. So turmeric <laughs> now I know that, why. Yeah, so turmeric is that beautiful root. Yes. Um, and it's a bright orange in colour. And if you chop it, if you get the fresh root and you chop it up, you tend to find your hands are stained mm -hmm. yeah, orange. Yes, absolutely. And remember my little, little motto if it's coloured, it's good. So. Turmeric is, is definitely one of colored. those very brightly coloured yes. herbs and it's very good. Does that make sense? It does. It does so now. it's amazing for the liver. Mm. Introduce it into your foods. Try and have it fresh if you can. You know, so have fresh root turmeric. Um, chop it into your salads. Put it into your stews and your casseroles and your soups. Put it even into your smoothies even. Mm. So it has quite a nice spicy flavour if you, if you chew it. But it, you, you, you kind of lose the flavour. Um, in a lot of dishes, so it's not a really strong mm. flavour, so you can put it in anything. I even put it in my bulletproof coffee. You do? I've seen you do that. So in the morning, when I have my bulletproof coffee, I've got all my healthy fat, my butter, my ghee, my MCT oil, so they're amazing for the body, and I've added some turmeric, and again, what that's doing is it's giving me a liver boost, and I'll sometimes add it to my evening drink as well. Mm, great little evening, great little morning, yeah. Uh, liver detox shot. Liver cleanser. All right, so we've done the liver, we've done the detoxing around the liver. Kidneys. Kidneys. So people don't think about the kidneys um, as a detox system, but mm. they really are because what the kidneys are doing is they're filtering all the water that comes through the body. Of course, yes. So again, they've got a really important role in pulling water-soluble chemicals out. So let me just differentiate, and I probably didn't explain this when I talked about the liver. Because the liver is working on fat, and sugar poisons the liver, so it's a fat, fun it's a, it, let's say it's a, an organ that has its basis in fat or it functions on fat. Yes. <laughs> Anything that is soluble in fat will go to the liver to be detoxified. Right. So when you think about those toxic chemicals in your body, if I take some fat and I put those chemicals in, if they dissolve, then the liver is going to handle those type of chemicals. Because if they're soluble in fat, the liver processes the fat, and as it processes the fat, it removes the chemical. Makes sense, yes. The kidneys process water. Right. So they will detoxify anything that's soluble in water. Ah, I understand. Right, so when we get chemicals in our body, they have, uh, there are a couple of different types. There are ones that are soluble in water, there are ones that are soluble in fat, there are some that are not soluble in anything, some that don't dissolve. We'll talk about them in a second. So once the liver's dealt with the fat-soluble ones, we've then got the kidneys, which we're going to use to take out the water-soluble ones. They have a very important function. 
But the only way they're going to be able to do that is if you give yourself plenty of water. So if you're dehydrated, they don't work. They don't work particularly well, they mm. don't function well, and they can't get rid of those water-soluble chemicals. Mm. So <clears throat> hydrate yourself well, have lots of the, yeah. the nice water. I was water. just doing that. Yeah, and just make, you know, think about the water that you're taking in. And I've got a few tips on this one. The first one is, um, be careful of what you drink from the tap. Mm. If you're in Indonesia like us, it's probably got a lot of bacteria and nasties in it. You don't drink the water here? So we don't drink the water here. If the water in your country is clean to drink, be careful because it may well have been chlorinated or had fluoride, fluoride added to it. Now, you don't want either of those in your system because they're two more toxics. So I don't really advocate drinking the water straight out of your tap. Ideally, you want to filter it in some kind of way. Or maybe go for mineral water, right. but think about the containers that it comes in. Mm. You know, are mm. they BPA free? Are they glass? Is it sustainable? But at least with mineral water, what you're getting is nice pure water that's got some minerals in it. And our body needs minerals to function. Oh. So that's great for the body. Be very careful about water that has been put through reverse osmosis. So there's a lot of people in the health industry promote reverse osmosis water. Okay. And that's because it is stripped literally of everything. Okay. It's all of the toxics have been taken out, that's good. But all of the nice things like the minerals have also been stripped out. And there is literally nothing left but water. The reason that's bad for you is because water will pull minerals from your body if ah, it's got if it doesn't have its it own. Yes. So when it when you're taking that reverse osmosis water, it literally will pull calcium out of your bones, it will pull the minerals that the it electrolytes will, all the electrolytes and everything, it'll pull them out of your body ah, and you will end up the bleaching effects that it actually just sucks it all in. Yeah it's not not really bleaching, not bleaching but yeah. it's a great analogy yes. for people. Yeah. So if you think about it, you know it makes sense that if it's naturally designed to have minerals in it, when mm. it's got none in it, it's going to find some and it's going to pull them out. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. So it's going to be uh, the reverse of what you actually want. RO. So you don't want the RO, the reverse osmosis water. It's great for your iron. It's mm. not great for your body. So you want nice, pure, either filtered tap water or mineral water. Take in plenty. Don't overdo it, but take in plenty to allow your kidneys to flush through. Right. Make sure you, you know, the, all the normal rules, make sure you pee often. When you go to the bathroom, make sure your pee's not bright yellow or brown. Mm. That shows you're dehydrated. Absolutely. If it's completely clear, you might actually be overhydrated. You want it just a nice, light, yellow, straw coloured. Mm. And then the, impo the other important thing for the kidneys is to add some salt because that will actually help you hydrate. You, your body doesn't really absorb water very well right. when it's just pure. Yep. But add a bit of pink Himalayan salt, just a touch, and your body will love you for that. Okay. So those things will help your, your kidneys. People do get worried about fat and the kidneys and will they get overwhelmed? I'm not gonna go into that today. But there's a little secret trick Ooh. to help your kidneys. We love the secret trick. So what is the, what is the secret trick of kidney wellness? It's alkalizing your body. Ah, the old alkalizing trick. And we know how to do that, don't we? We do. And again, <laughs> I want to dispel a myth. There are lots of people who will promote doing things like eating certain foods because they say it makes your body alkaline. Mm. And, you know, I'm not going to say it does or it doesn't work. It's not a technique I think is particularly effective. And if we look at the, um, you know, a lot of those foods, they're heavily polluted anyway. So sure, add lemons to your morning water, but I'm not convinced it's going to alkalize your give blood. Us your, give us your secret tip then, Liv. Secret tip is breathing. Oh, just the old basic breathing? The old basic breathing, mm -hmm. but not as we know it. No? Not as we know it. <laughs> There's a whole episode on that, isn't there? There is a whole episode. <coughs> so if you're interested, go and seek out our episodes. and We've got quite a few of them about mm. breathing, but essentially the structured breathing techniques that we're talking about, the ones where we're filling our belly full of breath, mm. not breathing high into our chest, the ones where we're super saturating our body with oxygen through a structured technique and then forcing the oxygen into every cell in the body, they have been proven to make the body slightly alkaline. In particular, they make the blood slightly alkaline. Good. And that alkalinity will help your kidneys function. So for anybody out there yep. who does <coughs> our breathing normally, yes, yes. 
you might just find, if you think about it, you quite often need to go and pee after you've breathed. Mm -hmm. And that's because you've alkalized the blood, the kidneys have gone, I feel really great, and you know, you've just gone, and you just need to pee a little bit more water out. Mm. Um, and the other thing that people find, don't forget, is when they get into the keto lifestyle, they've given up carbs, their kidneys no longer signal the insulin to be released, and the water that gets stored in the muscles with the glucose mm. is no longer needed, so the kidneys actually flush extra water out. So again, when you're on that mm. you know, you know, journey to keto, you've just started, that's why you need a bit extra hydration, so that kidney detox system can work effectively. Excellent, some great tips there. So we now, we've detoxed the liver, we have. We've detoxed the kidneys. Yeah, or we've, let's say, let's not say detox. No, no, but we've, let's say we've, we've assisted take, them. We've taken care of the liver so that to they allow can, it to so detox. They, because that's their natural function, isn't it? Yeah. So we've done everything possible to make sure our liver is detoxing effectively. Our kidneys are detoxing effectively. Let's move to the lungs, the old breathing organs. <sighs> the breathing organs, exactly. So, you know, the lungs, they really do a, an important job here because one of the things that we said right at the beginning was that one of the ways that we get toxins into our body is by breathing. Absolutely. You know, so we, we talked for the liver and the kidneys about drinking and eating and that's how it gets in and maybe other you know, environmental pollution. But with the lungs, we're literally breathing air in and it may be polluted, it may have chemicals in it, um, it may just have, you know, products of combustion if we're near a fire. Could be cigarette smoke. Could be cigarette smoke, <laughs> you know, hopefully you don't smoke, but somebody near you is smoking. Could be, um, you know, dust. Absolutely. So it could be a dusty day. And, you know, you could be breathing in all sorts of things. And so the lungs have got a really important function. Not just the lungs, it's the whole respiratory system, if I, if I want to be really accurate. Right. right from the second that, you know, um, you take an air through the nose, it's coming into contact with all those little, um, let's say, they, they look like little, you know, wavy bits of hair, mm. and they're catching bits of pollution. Yes. So all of the particulates, we're trying to take them out with all of the, the respiratory system. And if we get anything in the lungs that is not meant to be there, then the lungs have this amazing reaction where they can basically spit it out, cough it out, you know, sneeze it out. So our coughing and our sneezing is all part of our natural detox from the lungs. Wow. Um, mucus, you know, we know that we get mucus formed. That's also a way that the lungs can expel toxins that have got in. Mm. So, you know, when you've gone and you've run a hundred meters as fast as you possibly could, and you feel a bit chesty, and you quite often have a bit of a cough, you know, one of those hacking coughs, yes. something nasty might come up. Yep. That is the lungs producing that mucus that then allows you to expel the toxins. Interesting. So the lungs obviously have a very vital function in the detox. So then breathing obviously would be one of the ways to ensure your lungs stay in tip-top condition to allow them to do detoxing. That's right. So if you if you think about it, what do we want from our lung, lungs? We want them to function effectively. Mm -hmm. So we want all of that um, you know that detox to happen, but we also want to be able to use the full capacity of the lungs. So we need to breathe deeply. So that we're not just using that top section, you know, right at the very top of the lungs, yep. which we do when we breathe shallow. We want to breathe down, down deep using the diaphragm so we can get right into the bottom of the lungs as well. Mm -hmm. And if we can use the full capacity and also if we can do breathing, the, um, you know, on a, on a regular basis and a structured form, we can actually expand the capacity of the lungs. Mm, okay, interesting. So we're basically helping them to function properly. Yep. And we're really, we're exercising them. We're actually exercising the lungs every day, like a big bellows. And we exercise the rest of our body. Yes. So why wouldn't we exercise our lungs? And that's helping them be, you know, really tip top in their condition and to use that entire capacity. So breathing is amazing for the lungs. Yep. And then think about what you're breathing in. Mm. So think about if you're going to do one of those structured breathing techniques, think about where you're doing it. <laughs> Because Here's a tip, don't do it in an aircraft. That's right, don't do Travel tip for you. I had a very nasty <laughs> bout of, I, I just don't get sick, but I did after I did it in an aircraft because mm -hmm. the, the air's recycled seven mm -hmm. times, does that make sense? It takes out, yes, it's 
gets everyone's germs and spreads them spreads lovingly. Spreads them. That's so you right. You get to suck them in yourself. You do. So yeah, think about where you are. Um, you know, if you're somewhere that's highly polluted. Mm. You know, so I have a bit of a challenge when I go to Perth in Australia. It's one of the places I stay is next to a freeway, and I know that at peak times of day there is a lot of traffic on that freeway. And if I'm sitting on my balcony breathing, it's not fresh air. Mm. So I try and avoid doing my breathing at those purpose, peak times. It yes. kind of defeats it. Yeah. So think about where you are. Think mm. about whether you're exposed to pollution. Try and get some clean air as often as you can. Yeah. Because when you're taking clean air, it allows your lungs to get rid of the rubbish that you have been breathing in. Absolutely. Um, avoid you know, particulates in particular. Haha, <laughs> particulates in particular. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. so we do with so that. Yes. Do? Yeah, very good. Um, so if you're driving around on a, a scooter or a motorbike, and again, mm -hmm. a lot of Asian countries, that's what we do, and you're exposed to all of that traffic pollution, the problem with that is it's not only chemicals in the air, it's solids, particulates, yes. and they go into the system and the lungs can't always mm. get them out. So think carefully, maybe wear one of those, you know, those those uh, face masks yes. that filters mm. the pollution. So it's dust or ash or just the, the actual the pollution soot. itself. Yeah, mm. the, the carbon from the There's a uh, whole bunch of things that float around out there in uh, tiny quantities that uh, get, in our, get in our mouth and get in our lungs. There are. So look after your lungs, mm. exercise them, work them, get clean air and cover your face when you think you might be exposed to toxins. All right, so we're working our way through the body. We're now making sure that our detox systems are in tip-top condition. Mm. Let's go to the skin, which is one we don't often think about when it comes to detox, do we? We don't. And if you think about the skin, the skin is a massive organ. Mm. It covers our it's entire largest, body. It? Is that correct? Um, it, there's different views on whether it's the largest or okay. not, but you look, it's significant. Let's, uh, let's say that. And if you think about the skin, people don't think about the skin as a detox organ. No. You know, it just sits there, it covers the body, it keeps everything in. We'd fall apart if it wasn't for the skin. Yes. But um, the issue with the skin is that it gets, first of all, it gets exposed to all of that environmental pollution. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you are literally exposed through your skin to everything. Um, we cover our skin in all sorts of things. So most of us take a shower every day or a bath. We wash with body wash. We, you know, we do our hair with a shampoo. We might put body lotion on, um, deodorant under the arms, mm. and all sorts of perfumes. Now, every time we put something on our body, if it's not 100% natural, then it's likely to have a lot of nasties in it. Again, we can have um, SLSs, we can have, um, you know, parabens, uh, we can have um, aluminium from the, the deodorants. And whether you believe the people who say aluminium is bad or not, at the end of the day, these are all chemicals. All chemicals you're putting on your body onto a detox, a detoxing organ that's looking to flush out the nasties, and you're putting all these nasties on top. Yeah, so I mean, again, what, so what you're actually doing when you're putting all that onto your skin, your skin's absorbing it. Of course. Yes. So when I wash my body in that wash that's got you know parabens in it, they're getting absorbed into my system. Now, whether you think they're bad or not, it's still adding a toxic load. It's not natural to it's add parabens into your system. Not natural, and that's going to go through, it's going to go into the body, and eventually that's probably going to end up in the liver, yep. and the liver's going to have to try and detoxify it. Absolutely. So you've just added a bigger load in. Mm. So reduce the load. Try to put you know, minimal cosmetics um, you know, and, and other beauty products onto the body that have got chemicals in them. Yep. So choose your cosmetics and your body preparations really carefully. Mm. Think about your perfume. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, but the perfume that they spray, spray that smells wonderful, it's full of chemicals. Now, I like to put a bit of perfume on like anybody else, but I don't spray it onto my skin. So a lot of people will get out of the shower. Now, your pores are beautifully open. <laughs> They'll put their body lotion Ready for on. for the chemical. Put their deodorant on, yes. that's all getting absorbed 10 times faster than usual because the, the pores are open from your hot shower. Um, and then they spray perfume onto their, onto their skin. Perfect to absorb all of those nasties into the body. Mm. So here's my top tip, spray your perfume onto your clothes. That way it's not going, it's gonna, there's a lot less going to get absorbed mm. into your body. So look after your skin in terms of what you put on it. Think about it when you're sweating. 
Yep. Um, so if you're going to sweat, you're going to go to the, the gym and you're going to exercise, you'll be sweating. So that's allowing the skin to, to detox because everything's coming out. Uh, perhaps think about going into a sauna, infrared or a, a regular mm -hmm. sauna, open the, pores. open the pores and that allows the skin to sweat out. Yes you know, whatever's inside. So saunas are a great way to, to detox using the skin. Right. And then the last one, which is, is one that's seeing a bit of a resurgence, is body brushing. Okay. So a lot of people will literally <coughs> you know, take a natural brush and brush the body, long strokes towards the heart, every day, a couple of minutes a day on a morning. And what that does is it just wakes up the skin. Um, it takes away dead skin cells. So right. our skin renews itself frequently. Yes. All that dead skin is sitting on your skin. If you brush it off, then you're allowing the fresh skin to come through. Okay. And that's effectively like the skin breathing. So get rid of all that dead skin, do a bit of brushing, and that also um, allows your circulation to, to wake up as well. So okay. great way to wake up the body as part of your morning routine for, for a couple of minutes. Okay, so be mindful of what goes on your skin. So be aware of the impact of those chemicals or things you put on your skin. Um, make sure that uh, or try and open the pores and flush out with mm -hmm. some, maybe some sore or something like that. And body brushing. And body brushing, some yeah. Great tips. Keep right. your skin in tip top condition. Let's go to the bowels. The, the bowels, bowels of the conversation. The, <laughs> the last of our detox system. <laughs> the bowels, what do we need to do? to make sure it detoxes as well as it could. Well, I think, I think there's a, a fair bit of value that we can, we can add on this one, right? <laughs> and it's not only the bowels, it is the whole of the digestion system. So we're right. talking here about, you know, from whatever you put in your mouth, it's everything from your mouth downwards that forms the gut and the bowel detox systems. That's right. our last system. So there's lots of things going on here in the body, but essentially, in the gut, in the, you know, in the stomach, the intestines, um, if we start first of all with the stomach, in the stomach you've got lots of acid mm. and we need that acid. In fact, the more acid the better. Don't get confused with things like acid reflux. What we're talking about here is having lots of acid, hydrochloric acid, butyric acid in the body, in the stomach to allow whatever comes in to be broken down. Right. So the first thing is, if you don't break it down, it can't go into the relevant organs to be detoxified. Right. Right. So first of all, chewing is really important. Chewing breaks food down. The next place that food gets broken down is in the stomach. So let's take a big piece of meat. We've taken in some meat. That might have some, unfortunately it wasn't a good piece of meat. It's got some hormones in it. It's got some, um, you know, it's got some nasties in there. It's got some, uh, you know, some antibiotics left in there. When it goes into the stomach, it's going to get digested by the acid. So just imagine that all being dissolved and broken down by the acid. That allows all those various different components to go, for exa example, to the liver to be detoxified. Uh, makes sense. As well as the nutrients to be absorbed. So first thing is we need lots of good acid in our stomach. And by the way, a bit of a, a tip, digression, but hopefully adds value. Anybody who's suffering acid reflux right now, that might be because your acid in your stomach is too low. Ah. So I'm going to give a tip in a minute for increasing the acid in the stomach. So lots of acid in the stomach helps you break down the food, helps you break down the toxins. Next place is you've got the gut itself. Now what we want is we want the food to stay in the gut and to be absorbed. And we want the, you know, to be processed and absorbed, and we want the, the toxins to stay in the gut and be eliminated. Now, a lot of people have got damage to their gut. Okay. If you've been eating carbohydrates, in particular wheat, mm. there is a very high likelihood that your gut is damaged. If you've been eating foods that you're not tolerant to, that you've got allergies to or intolerances, your damaged. gut may yep. be damaged. Yep. And so all of these things could have led to damage to the lining, very, very fragile lining in the gut. So it could have led to damage to the lining of the gut. And what happens then is food particles and toxins pass through the gut lining and go directly into the bloodstream. They're not meant to be there. We're not meant to have particles of food in the blood. or toxins in the blood. <laughs> We want everything to stay in the gut so it can be processed, food gets absorbed by the gut, and toxins get eliminated. So having that gut 
in a really nice, good way, having the gut lining, um, you know, intact, it's really important. Okay, so what do we do? And then, tips? sorry, haven't, what? Finished, haven't oh. finished yet, let me ask you. All right, I'm so of, excited. Lots lots of of value. I want a solution. Yeah. I know you do. <laughs> as, as we progress through the gut, we've also got lots of bacteria in the gut, and those mm. bacteria are breaking down the food, and they're also helping us deal with toxins. Yep. So we want to have the right mix of bacteria in the gut. Not too much of the bad guys and plenty of the good guys. So we want our gut in good condition and then we want to be able to have bowel movements frequently. So we want to have, you know, sorry, got to talk about this. We want to have good regular bowel movements, ideally once a day, of a solid variety. So if you're constipated, it's not good because what it means is if you're constipated, all those toxins that you're trying to eliminate, because yes. this is where the solid waste, remember I said some of those toxins are not soluble. Mm. They are going to stay in your waste mm. and they're gonna come out when you go to the toilet and move your bowels. I understand. So when you have a number two, when you have a poo, then out it comes. So you want them to stay in the gut. So really, really important with this one, that we've got, we're eliminating frequently. If you're constipated, those toxins are staying in the gut and they're getting reabsorbed. Yes. Does that and make sense? It's, it's not healthy, I understand. It's not healthy. You're poisoning your system. On the other hand, if you have diarrhea, that's mm. also not good. No. Okay, so we don't want diarrhea, we don't want constipation, we want nice regular daily bowel movements so we can eliminate that waste from our bodies. Cool. So that's why our um, digestion and bowels are really important when it comes to our health and it's one of the they are one of the five main detox systems right so anything else on the bowels any other tips or tricks well now I've got the tips I've oh, talked got... about their function okay, cool. but let's do the tips good that's what I was getting to that's yeah. what I, I, like, I like to have solutions I'm a solutions guy the solution. <laughs> I know, all right, I know. Go. so all right I've got a few tips for you here the first one is if you're, if you're in that category of person who might have damaged their gut, mm. and to be honest, you may not know this. Mm. So I would encourage everybody to act as though your gut's been damaged. Yes. Especially if you've been a wheat eater at some point, yes. uh, which most of us have, then repair the gut. Now what that means is eat again, a good quality diet full of those beautiful ketogenic foods that are going to look after your gut. Eat the foods that are gentle on the gut, and this might surprise a lot of people. Meat and fat are going to be the things that help your gut repair. Wow, it's interesting. Vegetables, sorry vegans and vegetarians, send me your comments, I know you're going to hate this. <laughs> Vegetables are very difficult to digest, right. especially fibrous ones. So mm. if your gut is damaged and you've got IBS symptoms, irritable bowel, you've got alternating constipation, diarrhea, or lots of diarrhea, then you might actually find you're having too much fiber or too much vegetables or too many raw vegetables. Wow, okay. Raw vegetables are super difficult. So if you're gonna have vegetables, well cooked and limit the amount, but have lots of those beautiful ketogenic fats that are going to help your gut. Mm. It's kind of counterintuitive. It is, it is. But does it's that not, make sense? It does make sense, it does, because you do, we, we know how much starch and fibre are in veggies, mm. especially some of those root veggies. And if your bowels are having a challenging time as it is in your digestive system, it makes sense to give them foods that they can digest mm. easily and it's not going to cause much pain and uh, discomfort. Exactly. So you want to calm your digest mm. digestion down. And a lot of people go on to these gut healing protocols, mm. which mm. are basically well-cooked meat, lots of fats, um, soups, stews, and they actually find that their gut settles down in days. Excellent, excellent. Um, so look after your gut, repair the lining because yes. that's what you need um, to allow it to detox. Make sure you've got lots of good bacteria. Now, I don't recommend probiotic supplements. I think they have a place, but I'd much rather that you've cultured your gut so you've got your, your gut used to the sort of feed, food that you're having and you eat food that's rich in things like butyrate. So butter is rich in butyrate and that will feed the good bacteria in the system. Mm. If you want to add some beneficial bacteria, go for kombucha or kefir um, or even perhaps a, a full fat yogurt that's got you know, bacteria in it right. or cultured veggies like sauerkraut and kimchi. So even though I've just said veggies can be a problem, 
If you have a very small serving of a fermented vegetable, then it's actually going to add in some great bacteria wow. and you're only having a small quantity because it's not going to upset your stomach. Yeah. So add in beneficial bacteria from those fermented type of mm -hmm. foods and your gut will enjoy that. But go slowly at first, they can be quite powerful and quite strong. So yeah, definitely add in the, the good bacteria. So repair the gut lining, yes. add in the, the good bacteria. Um, Another one to help the gut lining repair is bone broth. Oh, yes, magic of bone broth. The magic of bone broth. So you can get the recipe um, from one of our other resources, one of our other episodes. Again, it just helps to seal the gut, um, help line the gut. The types of amino acids that, that are in it, the gelatin that's in it, they're all wonderful for the skin, the nails, the hair, and the gut. Excellent. And then the last one, remember a few minutes ago I mentioned about having acid in the stomach. I was going to remind you of that, yes, increasing you the amount of good digested acid. No, I didn't. Yeah. And I was just going to make sure you didn't leave that one out. Well, the best way to do it, we're not going to drink acid, but what we're going to do is we're going to add salt. Okay. Pink Himalayan salt, taken before meals, so maybe a, a warm glass of water, a little shot, shot of salt. What that's going to do is the chloride, because salt is sodium chloride, mm. the chloride is going to combine with other things in the body and make hydrogen chloride, hydrochloric acid. And there you go, it's started to increase the acid because we need hydrochloric acid to break down food, especially protein, Excellent. increases the acid in the stomach, breaking down the food. Mm. So bone broth, good food, limit the veggies, Get the beneficial bacteria in salt. and plenty of salt. Don't Good limit your salt. salt. And Excellent. your digestive system and bowels mm. will love you for it. So a good long chat today. It was a long chat. a long chat. chat so There's five systems. Like five systems. An episode on each. <laughs> so we're talking detox. And first of all, we understand that in a lot of instances, the toxins that are in the body are unavoidable. Um, but we can take some steps to reduce those. But if we care for those five detox systems with the tips that you've given us, we're doing everything possible to keep our body to de de regularly detoxing mm. those, uh, those yucky, those nasties, and uh, in great shape. I think at the end of the day, we're not looking to do anything different here to what we promote on the ketogenic lifestyle, mm. um, using structured breathing, um, cold exposure, which also helps some of the, the systems because it reduces inflammation. Yep. But this is basically the ketogenic lifestyle in a nutshell. If you use the ketogenic lifestyle as, it, as it's meant to be used, then your five detox systems great can work really effectively. Yeah. Add in a bit of breathing, mm. add in a bit of care for your skin, mm. limit the pollution and the toxins in your environment, and you've got five detox systems that are working perfectly mm. every day for you, keeping you in tip-top condition. And just a quick last minute Ooh, tip. Last minute tip. The reason we don't recommend dirty keto, lazy keto, is because those two forms of keto you're still consuming a lot of toxins. So the reason, one of the reasons that we stick with the, the pure, unadulterated form <laughs> is because it's a lesser toxin load and it gives your body what it needs to detox. So don't do the Cheeto Keto. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> right, thanks for your time.